looking for material today to make uh, Friday's video. It's Thursday, so <laughs> spent all my time working on this flame engine to fail. So I've made three pistons. I've checked everything to the print, to the design, did experiments. Can't get it to run. Kind of wants to go, but not really. So I'm shelving that for now. That's what burnt up all my time. So I don't really have a project to show, but um, got some. Uh, hopefully, I can share some information here, some pearls of wisdom, whatnot, um, to help somebody. Um, first of all, I've started playing with prints that. Since tapmatics are so expensive and I'm getting kind of tired of tapping with that little 4 inch crescent wrench, I've been toying with the idea of making my own tapmatic. It won't be reversible, but I've got a couple of prints, a couple of designs on paper here that I'm playing with and thinking about, and maybe next Friday will be a video on making that. Maybe, I I'm, I'm, don't know if I'm going to have a video next Friday or not, but... Um, first up, some advice that I learned, uh, chainsaws and weed blower whackers and leaf blowers always seem to have problems over time starting or running. So I had taken my chainsaw in not too long ago for, um, quite a while ago actually, because <laughs> I knew the carburetor just had to be rebuilt. So I gave it to the guys, they rebuilt it, and they gave me some advice. They said, first, um, gasoline, use premium only. Their experiences are if you use unleaded or uh, non-premium type gas, it, they've seen engines wear out faster. So that was the first piece of advice. I only use premium now in the lawnmower and all the other engines. The second piece of advice is they say uh, use Stabil, and this wasn't that expensive off Amazon, and because they say uh, you have a five gallon tank of gas, gas can, and it's going to last a long time, and it sits there and it starts to becoming like a lacquer uh, varnish, and it starts coating carburetors, jets, everything, so it takes very little Stabil. Um, to stabilize it. It lasts, makes the gas last a lot longer. So I know anybody who has a boat knows about Stabil because you put it in storage, you don't pull your boat out. So that's the first little piece of advice. Um, second thing is Demar Fair. I got nice magnifying glass with a gooseneck. It has a stand, but I'm making a little um, mount here to put it on the lay, mill, lay, so that I can easily get it out of the way or pull it in when I need to use it because I'm tired of trying to hold it. You crank and then you got to move this and you got to move that. So hopefully that'll work out. It was uh, like $18, so well worth the money. Um, so I've just got a bunch of little clips here to share with you guys. First is going to be opening up a bore gauge set that I bought that I was using to measure the cylinder and the pistons on the engine and the quality of that blah blah so that comes up next then I uh, did pick up a micrometer holder I saw Pierre Pierre's garage using one looked at him a long time ago but it looked so nice when he was using it so I went to explore $19 why not great great thing so I'm going to share that uh, then I've just got some other heads up info in a video about some stuff uh, then the actual micrometer holder I'm going to show I had rebuilt it because it really didn't look good to me uh, whatever and then at the end I'm just going to share some do-it-yourself tools that I've made sort of like starter stuff for the mill and I know there is some lathe stuff in there but for what it's worth, here's some do-it-yourself tooling. This is from Amazon Prime, so it's free shipping. This is the bore gauge set that I ordered, and it's from Anytime Tools, which I've usually always had good luck with, so 
I'm hoping that I will have good luck. Okay, nice box as advertised, Anytime Tools. This was $30 for this set. So I can check out the flame engine cylinder bore. I'm hoping, uh, pretty nice box. Well sealed, I hope it's not rusted. I'll take that sticker off. But... Alright. <laughs> Uh, oof, nice foam. It's the high density foam. Oh, it looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. And it'll be protected, so luck is with me here. How do you work this thing? Oh, it's spring loaded and then you lock it. Must be a cam with a rod that just locks the thing in place, right? Yep. Sure enough. So, all super shiny. <laughs> Great set. Great set. This feels kind of... Okay, it needs some work. <laughs> it needs some oil. This isn't going in that side. This, I guess one side's supposed to go in, the other's not. But uh, a little bit of oil in these guys, and they should work fine. All of them look cherry. Yeah, it definitely needs some oil. All right. Cool. All right. Locked out. Thank you. Anytime tools. Not sure what it is, but I suspect I know what it is. Oh, okay. It's either from eBay or it's from eBay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the micrometer stain. This was $19. Came from the US. Yeah, not too bad. So I got tired of trying to hold the micrometer and I figured for $19, why not? Heavy sucker. I guess it's professional. Made in China, of course. Come on. Oh. Boy, it's a rough finish. But I guess it's a casting, huh? Smoother casting on the inside than the outside. So, oh, that's hits there. I guess once you open it up further, why is it not opening? It is, that's a fine pitch, let me tell you. Huh. And this should lock up, yep. So, I finally have something. It's a little sloppy, but China, $19, what the heck. I can always probably sand it down and then repaint it myself. Make it a little bit nicer, but I'm just going to use it as is. Yeah, just testing it out works pretty nice. This is going to be really fun, nicer, a lot nicer. Uh, on a, just a side note, I had bought a third set of these because I just didn't want to spend the time making it. And I needed another set for the new lathe. I had all the holders, but I bought the 3 8 set. $35 or something from HFS, got it in, the finish was terrible. It wasn't labeled like this, it was a nasty rough finish, so I quickly returned that, ordered a set from Anytime Tools, which is where I've always been buying them, I didn't know they had markings on here, a part number I guess. <laughs> Uh, and, and so this is the Anytime tool set came in and it's nice. You just wipe the grease off of it, holds all the inserts nicely, beautiful set. Um, I did get, I'm not sure if I showed this, I forgot what, it, yeah this again, Anytime tools is what, ow, it's a hard case to open but, um, nice set. I did have to take them apart and clean it up. What there is, is, uh, well, I'll take this one out. It took me a while to figure out this unscrews. You can undo this, pin comes out, unscrew the handle, and then this stuff flies out. So be careful. Uh, the, screw, the springs in here are the smallest thing in the world. And I did lose one, and it took me about an hour crawling on my hands and knees to find it. Um, there's another little spring that this handle pushes on with a pin in there that goes in a groove. This guy goes inside of this guy. There's a groove in this and a groove in this. 
and that's what it's sliding on. And I found the sides of the grooves had all kinds of burrs on it. So I took them all apart, uh, jeweler's file, cleaned up all the burrs everywhere, even in this guy, because it, it goes the slot goes all the way through it to get into the slot in this guy. Cleaned up all the sides, and now they're real smooth. Tested them. They work great. So I just wanted to review that. I forgot what this cost. It wasn't that expensive at all. Nice foam, beautiful case. Hard to open, but <laughs> let's see how long that lasts. So that's all I have here to review with you guys. What to say about this? I really didn't like the finish on it, all those bumps. So of course I take the file out, file it all down as far as I could, and then respray it. I wanted to get the finish that they had, and closest I could think of is uh, Home Depot has hammered silver stuff and that's the finish <laughs> and it's not easy the heavier you put it on the more it looks hammered and you put it on heavier and these white light spots get really big so it didn't really come out looking too hammered but okay <laughs> and of course I gotta do brass stuff on there and to make it look nicer so um, yeah there have been times when I'm trying to hold the micrometer and the part and do it and it's pain in the butt so this makes it really easy but then I started thinking about it going most of the time when I break out of micrometers because I want extremely accurate readings and it's done in the lathe I can't pull the part out so this is I don't know how often I'm going to use this thing, but for $19, uh, what the heck, get it. Uh, so I have to store it someplace, but um, that's the guy. Tooling for the mini mill. I did a video on do-it-yourself tooling for the mini lathe, um, but I haven't done anything for the mill, and I get a lot of people asking questions and it really interested or have the mill but I or the lathe but I don't see many people with the mill I don't get much activity on that and I hope a lot of people get into it because it's a lot of fun and with the two machines you really have a pretty good machine shop at home this was one of the first things I made I had bought that made in China black angled uh, fly cutter set. I think it was four fly cutters with just regular high-speed steel square edged inserts and it it does not cut. <laughs> Later on after I learned a lot uh, you need to have a grinder and you need to know what you're doing to be able to grind actual cutters out of it but I didn't know back then so I was still using the chuck rather than any collets or anything at that time so I was limited to the size the chuck could hold and made this guy so this is on the lathe and then the mill did the rest of this and, <coughs> and back then all I had <coughs> excuse me was a quarter inch Harbor Freight inductable set so this did a pretty good job I ran this thing for a long time did a lot of steel aluminum different things with it but then when I got the ER32 collets I thought let me make one bigger and see what happens and this is the biggest collet I've got it's it is a lot different um, I'm not sure whether it's just because of the insert this is a generic insert and this is a 3 8 tool holder that I had machined on the mill so I'm using the mini pallet which I'll show so this does a really nice job. This is my favorite fly cutter and I could put um, an actual aluminum insert in here but this is doing mirror finishes. It's just gorgeous so I'm thrilled with that. So those were two things that I had made. One of the other things that was really important was trying to be able to tap straight. Um, this is spring loaded. goes in a half inch collet in the mill and all of the taps have a point on them so what this does is it keeps it keeps the tap absolutely straight while I put a crescent wrench on it 
and run it in. It was pretty easy to make. It was uh, actually done on the lathe, I'm sure you can tell. Uh, I think that was done in the mill, centering it up and then drilling it. This is stainless and the rest of it's 1018. So there's not too much to it. Um, oh, nice grease in there, but okay. <laughs> So this, uh, I'm sure in all the videos you've seen me use this thing over and over and over again, and it's I love it. But uh, next up, you can get slitting saws. On I, these came from eBay directly out of China. They were real cheap. It just takes forever to get them. You got to wait for them. So and they're all metric. So they give different millimeter sizes and I figured I like having tooling so that when I need it, it's there. I don't have to wait for it. So I had made my own arbors here for them and really easy to bang out and clean and you mount them up. So okay, so now I've got slitting saws, pretty inexpensive. I think these are like $5 each and this is just aluminum stock plenty of the stuff around. Easy to make arbors and no sooner, well like I said, I like having things in the shop so when I need it and not too long after getting this capability in the shop, I made this guy which actually goes in the lathe. This goes in the back end of the lathe and it performs a bunch of functions. Um, one it's a plug so it keeps all the chips from coming through the chuck and going out the back end into the gears. The second thing it does is it allows me to put a wrench on here for threading because there's a lot of times um, it, I just can't hold the chuck or the collets by hand and thread. It's just too much force and you can see I've used it a lot because it's pretty beat up here. And the last thing, and probably more things, but uh, when I need to get the ER32 collet chuck tighter than by hand, I can put a wrench on this and a wrench on the collet chuck and really crank down on it good. But this was done with a slitting saw, as you can see. Uh, there's a little taper in here. I think the uh, print for this, a lot of this stuff, you'll find the prints for them on my website which is shown in the splash screen at the end of every video so it's just a stainless steel socket head cap screw that brings this in and expands and it doesn't take much to crank this down and it does not move so this was done on the mill just take the hex collet block in the mill and bzz, 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 and you're done. You got a nice nut any size you want. So that's done on the mill. What else did I do here? Oh yeah, when I was making all of these little arbor guys, I figured um, I've got the drill doctor and the diamond thing was I thought was wearing out. So I went and bought another one. This is the old one, and I figured, well, let me put it on an arbor here and. I don't know quite what to do with it. I played with it in the mill a little bit and uh, it can kind of uh, hone or chart um, angle some of these uh, insert holders but not really so I don't know what to do with this guy. I've just got it in the drawer and maybe someday something will come up with it. Uh, other easy things was the handle when I did the LMS little machine shop upgrade for the belt drive, this wouldn't clear, so I got to turn this down on the lathe and make. Yeah, I'm talking about all the lathe stuff, but made this stuff. You can make a lot of nice handles and things like that for the mill. I did uh, handles everywhere it's for everything because I didn't like the yucky cheap plastic ones that came with it. But what else did I make? At one point in time, in the beginning, oh, lots of dust. I didn't, I couldn't have Ford parallels, so I just took some acrylic, machined them down, and made an assortment of parallels, and they work really nice. All done on the mill, all nice. You caliper them, micrometer them. They're equal. They're perfect. These are great. I've showed these in a lot of videos. 
and one of the main things too is if you want to clamp something to get it loose you can clamp it between these two pieces and there's not a mark left on what you're clamping and these are tight enough that they just hang on there was a bigger set that I used specifically for clamping and it lasted for years and finally I did something and it accidentally snapped it but so I did parallels that way and I didn't have anything to hold something vertical so you just mill this out here's a groove in here for holding something if I got to hold something round horizontal or vertical so again easy easy projects to do in the mill that go in the drawer so when you need them and I have used them they're there what else did I do? I did uh, soft jaws uh, one of the videos you'll see what the particular vise that I'm using so because I'm saying you want to clamp things and you don't want to mark it up I just made this set just for grins and giggles just to have they're not exactly straight I did a video on these things and I think drilling or uh, milling these holes out for the pockets heat was generated and it warped it so but I still have them I could use them someday I don't know if I will or not but they're there and did make the speed handle for the vise too speaking of the vise um, a lot of this is done on the mill where you find center and to make a nice pocket you just go down with a center cutting end mill so that that does a lot rather than putting this in the lathe and trying to do boring and trying to get a nice square bottom it's so easy to pop this in the mill find the center with the edge finder go right down in with a end mill and get it done Another video I showed making a machinist jack for the mill. Um, I can't remember if any of this was done on the mill or not. That's a lathe, that's a lathe. But uh, there is a video on this guy, and uh, I did need it. I never thought I'd need one. Suddenly I wound up with a project in the mill where I did need one, so I made the sucker. Uh, I had temporarily just used this bolt in a nut to perform the function but other things on the mill made um, a nice like uh, dial indicator test indicator holder bang it out I did the bottom I'm not sure if you can really see the bottom but locked out got this sucker absolutely flat it's beautiful on the granite surface just a stock stainless steel rod set screw put it in there this thing has worked and I've used it over and over again. Another project, I'll just bring the whole tray over here. Mini pallets. I saw this, I think this was on Tom Lipton Aux Tools, but this, I have used this thing left and right. There is a print for it on the website. Uh, little recess groove so this guy stops. I can put him any place I want. He clamps in the vise, and now I've got, that's how I made this cutter. He was actually clamped down in at angles, hanging off the edge, so I could machine it easily. And there's a whole assortment of clamps that you can see here. All different types, sizes, lengths, so I can pretty much so clamp anything I want down on it also made one of these pallets for the grinder it goes out on the uh, end of it and I can use all these clamps to hold something as a, an angle for actually taking something and going into the grinding wheel with it so this is great and then I did make a smaller one because the other ones uh, four inches <coughs> this is three and the Y travel on the mill doesn't go that far so there's sometimes I want to hang something pretty far out off the pallet and uh, it just don't have the travel to do it well wow, you can see all the patterns in this guy so you can see what this fly cutter does it's really nice so that's just some of the tooling that I wanted to share here for the mini mill and I hope more people get into it because uh, it's a lot of fun let me tell you